Ciao, uh, buonasera. Um, sorry, I'm talking in Italian for for a moment. <laughs> uh, I need to speak English because this is the English version of uh, of our um, uh, of our series. While uh, uh, we are at it, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ozan uh, for his logo. Okay, so there it is. Uh, thank you very much, Ozan, for your uh, uh, for your generosity. I didn't even ask Ozan; he just decided to make me a logo uh, for, uh, for for Phase One Hundred One. So I do appreciate uh, his time and effort in doing this, and his you know his willingness of doing it, um, just like that. As always, I'd like to thank uh, Fabio Cucci for uh, letting me stream his book. Um, He's is turning out to be very um, interesting, uh, the book. Um, in fact, um, I'm just going to show. Yeah, so I'm just going to show what how we finished last week. Okay, so this is what we did last week. How we ended. Um, so, from. As you can see, this is mainly big part of a small intro or demo, um, um, which was done through the book. So as you see, this is how we ended up uh, the um, last stream. We did what you are seeing on the screen. Um, so we are going to continue to improve on this. Um, things will change, um, but uh, note that everything is done step by step. Fabio was quite uh, quite cool in the way he organized the book, I have to say. 
uh, and sometimes me myself do not understand why he did so but then I realize wh why for example this one this chapter I had uh, I had a big uh, a big issue with the way it was done because horizontal scrolling was not really covered and you know the chapter says scrolling um, but in chapter 6 he says text and scrolling he should have said text and horizontal scrolling he goes in depth into there but to be honest it's the same routine nothing changes so it's just the tweaking of the registers that is what really changes and I used to do horizontal scrolling a bit different than what uh, Fabio um, shows however I like his method more and I will uh, start using his method uh, more than anything else um, I think it's more um, it's more easy and more um, more elegant uh, in the way to do horizontal scroll okay so let's see where we are with the book okay so I need to see the book too not just you guys because I can switch but doesn't switch also to the window um, that you are uh, that you are seeing okay so that was lesson 5g when we how we ended last week so actually we need to continue with the uh, assembler so we need to do lesson 5h so let's go back to the assembler given that I will be able to switch 5G, 5H and I need to switch you guys okay so let's assemble it and let's see what uh, the, uh, the code does so um, this time we have this routine we've seen it okay we have seen the same routine uh, earlier okay um, of shifting the whole image left and right by 16 pixels and then re returning back the only difference now it is like there's a wave in it so it's like waving um, the uh, logo or the image um, the reason why it's doing that is because he's waiting on a particular lines on the screen okay uh, and then changing the shift register while before we were every frame we were updating uh, a position on the screen now we are doing it in several in se we're doing several shifts in one frame and that gives it the uh, illusion that it is um, uh, you know shifting from like a sine wave in a way in it okay and i'm going to show you the code you will see that there is actually no code but actually a copper list that is cycled so that is why it gives that uh, uh, effect and it is uh, the same routine that he used for cycling colors or anything else that is cycling basically so something that is shifting from bottom it goes to top and what is on top goes to the bottom and continue this type of rotation so nothing really um, changes I'm going to show the code to it so uh, we need to go to um, the other book the examples book and I need to switch to uh, my comments so if you're you're going to see it's the same code so there's nothing to explain except this part um, given that i change the possibility of enable scrolling so i can scroll the screen so this is the routine the cycle routine that you've seen several times so i'm i'm seriously do not need to explain it it's just 
you can see it's moving something from one location to another okay and then adding it and decrement and just going in circle okay um for infinite basically so what is happening is this he added this copper list where he says we're waiting on this line of the screen and then bpl con one which is register 102 we do a shift of zero here at this location we do a shift of two um here at this location we do a shift of seven eight nine and it continues like that and it gives that effect so and then what happens is once we display it uh, once we, we create it once we start rotating so what's in this in this weight goes to here where seven seven was and the nine nine comes uh, where the eight eight was it's all that is and what's on top the zero okay goes to the bottom and what's at the bottom goes um, further up and it continues like that that's all the routine is doing we've seen it in doing the copper copper bars so yeah i do not see um that we need to explain or go into more detail in relation to this um i think it is boring um explaining this okay so We've done number H, and I think there's another one that we need to do. So let's see if there's another one. And after H, there is I. We have to do L and M. So there is quite a, a bit to do. So let's do I. Um, so let's go back to the Amiga. Now, this is a <laughs> this is a routine that you will say, "What the heck is this? There's nothing on the screen. There's just garbage." But actually, this routine is quite an interesting routine. We've seen this routine, okay? It's a scroll routine, okay, that goes up or down. But there is no image to scroll up or down. Why? Because we are have viewing the memory so this is this routine can be used the same routine to scroll something up or down um, so basically this routine goes through our memory and it can be used like a the basic for doing a repair uh, to rip memory um, uh, images basically in memory now what you need to understand is that the screen maybe you haven't realized yet but the screen is 640 by 256 not 320 by 256 so if there's an image there okay um so here you see this is the as in pro uh, when you start as in pro the image that it displays in the beginning it's not showing properly first of all we don't have the same uh, resolution of the image okay but we know we ca you can tell it's an image okay so then what you need to do is to have some type of control on the ripper in this case and set the modulo set the data fetch start data fetch store a stop and all the and the, um, all the others and set the correct resolution so that you can rip the image of course we are not going to do that <clears throat> but this is the main routine, the same routine that you've seen to scroll an image up or down, but instead we are applying it on the memory. And it's the same, honestly, there is not much to explain in the routine. So we just that we have a routine that goes up and down. Okay, same before we were doing it automatically of going up and down. And right now we are pressing the mouse button to either go down or up. So not really any changes, but. Um, let's go back to the book and as always you see the book and i don't now i see the book 
So, um, this was, we are doing lesson H fits I, no? So, we are doing this one. So, as you see, this is the routine that you've seen several times, okay, to move a screen up and down. Now, the only difference from before, we were doing an add 80 and sub 80. We, we were used to 80, okay, either subtract 80 or add 80. Why he's doing times 3? So, basically, we are skipping 3 lines. Uh, instead of one line so before it that's why it scrolls a bit faster when we press the left mouse button or right mouse button because we are skipping three lines not uh, one line uh, so we are used to have it at 80 okay but times three is we're skipping three lines uh, three pixel lines height okay also it's 80 because it's 640 by 256 if it was 320 by 256 lines then it would be 40 okay because it's 40 bytes i mean 320 division by 8 is 40 well 640 division by 8 is 80 okay so that's uh, the main reason there is nothing else in this code uh, here you can see the the uh, we're setting high resolution you know it's bit 15 uh, for high res on the amiga of bpl con uh, zero so we're doing um we're doing just that but there is nothing else in the code in fact i have no notes and we arrive to lesson 5i which is an interesting concept and this one is just a, another copy list uh, by changing something that i explained last week um, which i am going to show you the effect that this change does it's a trick on the modulo when we make it minus 40. so let me show you the amiga There you go we have the amiga stretched that we had before um why it is stretched remember we were if we want to skip a line we said that we can do uh, a modulo of 40 okay so we will be skipping the next line we can skip two lines by having a module of 80 three lines by having a module of 120 etc 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 now if we make instead of plus 40 minus 40 to the modulo what will happen it will simply repeat the same color on the same of the same line across the screen and it, it feels like it it's like a drop imagine as i explained you, to you last week imagine you're painting a wall and you have that drop of paint that goes down through the wall okay and makes that line with the same color just that line with the color of the paint it's the same thing the same effect so whatever was the previous line we draw it several times so I'm just going to show you um, again now the source, okay, for to create that effect, and you will see, okay, you can see my mouse now. You will see that. All he's doing is waiting for a certain uh, line, okay, in this case 91, okay, on the Y axis, and changing the modulo, okay, for the, um, changing the modulo to, for the odd and even, so 
108 and 108, remember, 2 minus 40. Then he sets it back again. Okay, then he waits a bit more, further down, and he does it again. So the image, you can see it, it it's, it's starts dropping, then it's like it stabilizes again and does it again for a certain amount of time. I, I will show you what I mean. You can see when he's breaking and uh, doing things. I'm going to show you um, where, how much he's waiting till he changes it, okay? And you'll see how the colors are like dropping down. So, let's see if you can see my mouse pointer. Yeah. So, you can see that now you know, I believe it's the first one, is here, is this, is this raster line, okay? Because we did minus 40, the same line you can see is the same color printed for, I don't know, three or four raster lines, okay? Then we tell it, um, no, we reset it to zero, so minus 40, then zero. And then we do another, we, we wait for one line, and then we do another minus 40 for four lines. And we create this effect. You can see from here to here, it's a repetition of, I don't know, three or four scan lines. I cannot really count, but yeah. And then another four scan lines, another four scan lines, another four scan lines, another four scan lines, another, and it continues like this. So it's like the same color drops for a certain amount of time on the screen and of course it's the whole line that drops so the color here is repeated the color here at this pixel is repeated every pixel on this line is repeated but same color going down and it does it uh, automatically okay we do not do anything so yeah this was done um, very easily as i said no real code it's so when I, when when you think about it that you created this effect without any coding there's no coding there except waiting for a raster line and tell it to do something on a modulo that's it it's it's ridiculous um so yeah um let's continue with the book i think this is where i should have stopped let's see so with it, I, L, O, I need to do M. M, the first one, though, because I think there are four of them. Okay, so let's do M. You can see the image being stretched, uh, going down, okay? In theory, okay, there is no programming in doing this. Again, really no programming. It's just we are changing the data um uh, the display window start for the amiga <laughs> that is all that we are doing and it creates that effect okay so there is no really no programming in in this we just have a loop that cycle the uh, y of the data fetch uh, uh, display window start for the amiga and I believe he's also doing it for the display window stop, but um, I um, I do not want to commit yet. I believe he's doing that. So let's pass to the code. So the routine. I mean, we've seen this routine so many times. So it's incredible. This we've seen it in chapter three, the same routine, okay? This same routine, and he is using the same routine for so many things. Yes, it that's that's what it does. It moves data and draw lines and does a fill, but in in uh it can be programmed with uh with the with the copper uh, to do these things. Um, so um, this is, you can see our flags, no? One is to change direction, 
okay and the other one is a counter when we have arrived to where we want to arrive so basically um, and you can see su a ju okay this is comparing whether we go up or down basically uh, and change the direction yeah yeah uh, Ozzy, yes. <clears throat> yeah. Although I do not understand 3D myself, and thanks to Dario, I'm trying to start understanding this. Um, I I can imagine that is how it is done, as Dario is saying and as Ozzy is saying. So, yeah, I mean, I've used the blitter, of course. It's not that I do not know how to use the blitter, but I've never done 3D with the blitter. <laughs> um, that's that's reality for me. Um, I've used it for other things, but not, not to do um, 3D. Anyway, um, so this routine is, I don't know, it's it's like it's it has become a... a, a there are three or four routines that Fabio constantly uses them. <laughs> I think, uh, Ozzy, I think when you have a faster CPU, the blitter became becomes slower. So then you can use the CPU to fill, to do fill. At, le at least this is what I read in other, uh, some other forums. Um, but of course, I do not know, for example, if you're using a vampire, I mean, the vampire should have a faster blitter, so I don't think it's this applies the same thing. I'm talking standard Amigas. Yeah, I mean, I have no idea how how it does the blitter um, on the vampire. Um, if it's same exact, if it's same exact timing, then yes. But I believe that you can change the timing of it too. They must have done something to to do that. So, um, not really uh, much to say here, except you're going to see. You see, this is where what I told you. He's changing the y value, okay, of the where the two C is, okay. He's changing the value of the 2C for the display window start. This is why he's creating that effect. The display window stop is not changing. Okay, so he's only changing uh, the 2C. We should see, let's, what is the la label name? DIWSCX. DIWSCX. Yeah. You can see he's changing just that, and when it arrives to see, then he changed direction. So there, there you go. It's it's not it's not much. Um. So again, another routine that has been with us since chapter three, and nothing else. At the end of this chapter, he's going to do. Uh, he's he's got a demo, let's say, of all of everything that we've done. Um, so I'm, I'm in a way spoiling it a bit, but you still need, need to imagine it uh, because you, you haven't seen it. So he has done a demo with every single routine that we have used so far in the book and mentioning the same route, mentioning the routine from where it came. And they all come from chapter three. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> the rest is just changing registers on the Amiga. Um, it's incredible. Actually, there is one or two that came from this chapter, but it is um, a, just a standard one, enhanced. So, now let's continue. Um, now we should continue with the book, because I did 5M. Okay, so what is display window start and display window stop? Because he made us look at the example, and then he goes and explains the display window start and display window stop. What it is, is that they, it's where you tell the Amiga where our screen starts and where our screen stops. Now, you need to understand that 
the screen is actually bigger than what we actually see. So imagine your monitor and imagine something bigger that is outside that you don't see. Okay. But to really the visible part starts at um to see eight one. Okay. To see is the Y position and eight one is the X position when it starts. Uh, where it starts you can actually change a bit the x the c the y and c but there's a limit how much you can change it because then you'll be in a part where you do not see okay so in fact to show you this i have the famous amiga hardware manual i need to find page 58 Hopefully, I find it quickly. Yeah. So these are my notes when I read the book. Okay, so um, page fifty-eight. So uh, let's make it big. This is our, this line here is what we see, okay? What 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 the monitor permits us to see, okay? And this is the actual screen where it starts, which is zero, zero. We don't, we are not able to see that, okay? So they are, that is outside our screen, uh, what the monitor lets us see. So to eight, eight one to see or to see eight one, okay? It's here, okay? It's this corner. And this corner here is um, to see C1, okay? In fact, I believe further down they are shown. So I am explaining something that he will explain in a minute. But um, So for PAL, okay, the values should be to see 81 and to see C1. And for NTSC is to see 81 and F4 C1. Now, you tell me how can it be that here when we are um, two five six lines down i mean here he's showing a 320 by by 200 which is which is ntsc but i'm talking about pal now um so it will be 256 how can it be we have to see uh also the reason why is that the y value has a hidden one in front of it and same for the x Okay, so actually what we are saying here is 1 to C and the uh, C1, it has 1 C1, which he will explain later on. And I think even the book gives them uh, somewhere. There you go. So you can see that we add 1, 0, 0. Okay, so 1 to C it becomes, and same for the X, 1, whatever the value we have. Um, to be honest, there's a note on this book that in ECS something has changed in relation to this, but I'm not going into the detail of this, because this is not actually precise in the way it is explained, but for simplicity, imagine there's a 1, okay? Um, in OCS, things were not so precise as ECS, but still, let's assume there's a one. So, um, you we don't confuse ourselves. To continue with uh, where I was, okay? So, the values, he's giving the um, values here. You can see um, Fabio did a small mistake here. Um, he's saying to C plus FF, but actually it's to C plus one zero zero. Okay, um, and same for the C one. It's uh, um, one and C one. Um, so yeah, it's um, let's say a typo in 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 this case, um, but actually. 
down here then you see he's saying ff plus one so ff plus one is one zero zero okay he should have written that up there but it doesn't matter um here he gives um so here he's showing us how we should write them and here he's giving um the explaining the and the display window stop with the um what he explained here so it's the same thing basically plus the ff plus uh for the uh y he's explaining the y and the x so he's saying i think that i mean that f4 is strange because he, on the x you cannot have even it should be um odd so i don't know why he said f4 there um probably there's a plus one somewhere Ah, he's ch saying the uh, the the difference. Okay, that's that's fine. Yeah, um, I'm going to um, I'm go the next examples are going to be the zooming. So yes, um, it's exactly why I'm explaining them because the zooming is coming. <laughs> Good one, um, Ozzy. So, he continues to explain what I just explained, the plus one in front uh, for the uh, uh, display window stop and display uh, window, st sorry, for display window stop on the X and on the Y. Okay, so I showed you the manual, uh, the Amiga hardware manual. Um, that's a book that you always need besides this book. It lacks examples, that book, but in terms of you know the hardware registers it's it's you know it's what you should look at so now let's do lesson 5m2 so not lesson example sorry and you're going to see what uh, Aussie just uh, Yeah, you're going to see it here in the X and Y. Wait, look, as soon as I press the J, okay, you're going to see it zooming into the X. Yeah, and then closing into the Y. And this is no blitter, nothing, just the copper, okay? Changing the display window start and stop on the X on the x value only i'm going to show it again because it's a uh, that's all it does it doesn't repeat doesn't loop well okay uh, guys come on it, let's be <laughs> let's be <laughs> uh, this is with the display window start and stop i am not saying other things it's already a start, okay? You see, it enlarged and then it closed. So it's like a curtain opened, okay? Like when you have a curtain and you open it more and then it closes. Well, it's not real zooming, it's enlarging on the X. That's what is happening to the image. It's enlarging it on the X. So it is zoom in a way. In another example, you're going to see enlarged in the X and in the Y. So keep that in mind. And then he will do other things. He plays with the Y, he plays with the X and Y together. Um, so uh yes uh that is done that is covered in a different chapter which i do not want to go there uh dma um i think it's chapter eight i cannot remember i think it's chapter eight um um where he goes into certain things uh he is not talking about dmas right now so let's not confuse the people around but yes So, 
and by the way Fabio calls that zooming okay just to make you aware <laughs> I mean, it gets confusing. No, it's just that in the uh, if you are a beginner, okay, and you are being told certain things, you need to hear them at a certain. You cannot hear them all in one go because you'll skip, you'll you'll miss, you will not, you'll be overwhelmed basically. So, this is what I like about the book. He goes. Uh, so, for example, when I read it the first time, as I said, I was said, "What the heck is this? Why didn't he cover?" horizontal scrolling properly but it was answered to me in the chapter afterwards okay um where he gives examples of how to do proper horizontal scrolling so yeah it's it's the same thing you know he's not covering <laughs> the dma right now because it's overwhelming when you are uh learning you know um for us that we know it's it's okay but for newcomers it's it's not so yeah, I need to keep with the book, you know. Uh, but yes, so um, let's go through the example. So, M2. So, you're going to see the routine, okay? That just changes. Uh, first, let me show you the registers, okay? He's changing, okay? the um, x value okay of the display uh, window start and the display window stop okay only that's all he's doing he's incrementing this and he is uh, sorry decrementing this and incrementing this okay and then uh, vice versa he's decrementing this and increment um, incrementing this and decrementing this okay so all the routine is doing as i was saying is changing the x value okay of uh, the data fetch start and the data fetch stop ah one thing that i forgot to say about display window start and display window stop the register values are always in low res so if you are in high res you still put to c81 and to c uh, c1 Okay, um, they do not change. So I don't think there is anything else to explain here, except in fact, look at the routine, how small it is. It's just doing an increment and a decrement of um, of what I, uh, I just said. So that's the routine. Now the next routine, instead of changing the X, he's going to change the Y. Okay, so let's change to the Amiga again. And and read the next example. So we did M two. We do M three. So this one, this time, you're going to see the effect of the Y. You see, that's the effect of the Y. You think is is the the image is going down, but actually it's not going down. It just creates that effect that is going down. What he's doing is he's decreasing the um, Y value of both the display window start and stop, and it becomes smaller, smaller, and smaller. So um, I'm just going to write uh, run it again for those that want to see what I mean you can see that it's very quick but you can see the y uh, of the display window stop going upwards if you pay attention close attention to it and of course the image from from where it is goes down also so yeah it creates that effect of closing something in a box i mean i don't know how to how to explain it but yeah um so going back to our code you will see that the only change is um you will see that the only change is so we did number three now is on the y 
you can see the only register he's changing now is the y and he's leaving in peace the x okay so next example you can imagine is the x and y together okay so you're going to see the fruit of both as you can see it's the same routine but changing and so subtracting the you see we're adding the display window start and we're subtracting from the display window stop that is all uh, nothing else changes um and that's the routine so let's do m4 now let's go back to the amiga so let's do m4 and there you go so it's quite fast the reason why there is that color at the back is so that it it's more evident more than anything also um this bright pointer is, is is creating some flicker so um because i don't think it's clear in this example um but yeah so guys look at um uh, how it grows then it's on the x then it goes becomes smaller but at the same time the y becomes smaller okay so you see that's um that's the thing and if we go to the code you're going to see that um uh we we actually he only uh is changing the x and y now for you see we are working on the x on the y and the x i'm saying them the opposite way because in in the couple they are the opposite uh the y and the x okay so he's changing them on both and you can see both routines that we saw for the x and y being uh, shown so both routines that we've used earlier are shown here there's nothing else that changes in the code okay so we arrived to the last one and to the last example in this chapter um let me check something in the book first so okay so 5n is the last one exactly so let's jump to the amiga Assemble it and run. Now, I hope you can still hear me. So, Fabio edit music to this one, and all the routines are of the same chapter of the chapter 3 and 5. I'm hoping you still hear me because. Can you still hear me? stop it so basically um i'm just going to go back to the book now to show you what i was uh, what i'm referring to so he didn't explain the music here he just edited it for the fun so that we have more pleasure and remember my image is not the actual image that was with the book the image that is with the book has got issues so i had to improvise and come up with an image um that I've been using for since chapter three, I believe. Um, so, let me bring the book for myself. Okay, so we are going to see, and he's going to mention all the routines that we have we have in that demo. So, small demo. Um, you can see. This routine comes from lesson 3H, okay? Then the next routine comes from lesson 3F. So this is all chapter 3, okay? Always the same routines. The next one comes from 3E, okay? 
then 5G with the one that we've seen where we stopped last week. Um, and then 5H that we've seen earlier. And then he added the music and he added the music by having an include music.s. So this is the play routine. And somewhere in the code, he's making a init, I believe. Let's see what it is at the beginning. I see, I assume. So empty in it so that it initializes the music and then empty play at the music. That is it. And when we finish, he does empty end. I mean, I'm explaining this. He doesn't explain it. He doesn't go into the music. He just edited it for the fun of it. Um, same he does in chapter six. He doesn't explain music. Music is in chapter 14 so we will not be covering music at all till chapter 14 um sound basically um till we arrive to chapter 14 and also uh, i have my reservations on on the chapters on the chapter um because although he talks about the play routine the play routine changed a bit since he wrote the book uh, there were various updates to it, so I um, will I would prefer covering those because why would we use an old routine? You know, we use a new one, uh, one of the latest ones, um, than anything else. Okay, so we have finished chapter five, okay, um, and we are going to start uh, chapter six. Um, what I will uh, chapter 6 just to make you aware what I will say from now on till we stop I will repeat it also next week because Fabio repeats it twice okay um, not because I want to repeat it twice but Fabio repeats it twice and I follow the book so also uh, it is a good thing it's a refresher in this case because I will stop in a, pos in a place where uh, I say it, okay, and then because there's a week pass, then I will repeat it. So, in a way, it's good for us. Um, that's uh, what I... Um, yesterday I was having doubts whether I should um, do it or not, but then I realized, because he repeats it twice, um, it's good that I say it, and then I say it again next week. Also, next chapter... The first, I think, eight, eight or nine pages are mostly theory. Um, then lots of examples. Man, I say lots. I'm, I'm serious. Lots of. I mean, I'm going to show because I think it's the chapter that has got most examples. Um, in, I think uh, I'm not sure, but so far, definitely, it is the most. Um, let Let me show you that. So, we did five. Now we finished five. So, look at number six, how many examples there. And here we are still in 6C. Okay? Now, you can see even the bar here. We have to go to the end and we will still be doing 6C. So, so it has still R. Okay? So, there are quite a, a number of examples to go through. Uh, next chapter. Um, let's load 6a. <clears throat> I'm not sure if we will uh, do anything with 6a, but yeah, I cannot remember if yesterday I used it or not. Um, but let's start um, with the with the book again. Sorry, I just needed to switch to myself not you guys so this chapter as the name says it's fonts and scrolling i say it's fonts and horizontal scrolling okay um 
he doesn't cover at all vertical here. He covers horizontal. Um, last week, I believe, um, uh, Ozzy was complaining that he doesn't cover properly um, horizontal scrolling, which I agreed. But I reminded him that he does it in chapter 6. Um, so, yeah. The reason why he doesn't ch cover horizontal scrolling is if you notice so far he has only covered um, two real registers actually four because they are pairs um, which is the display window start and stop and the modulo okay those are the only four registers that he covered he hasn't covered data display sorry data fetch start and stop and he goes into the detail of those and he goes into the detail of those with modulo so that's when things um that's why you i like the way he explained it he explains it and how he divided it um i think it's a good way if for somebody that is starting from the beginning and trying to learn to um, learn these things. Ah, you want it more loud. I didn't see your 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 message. Um, Ozzy, you wanted it more louder. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Good one. Uh, okay, so so this chapter, um, now I'm reading exactly what he says here in the first paragraph. He will cover text on the screen, okay? He will cover scroll screens with a bigger, which are bigger than the display. So he actually what he means is horizontal scroll screens bigger than the current display because so far we haven't done it and the use of tables okay we haven't used tables i would add another one the use of the section uh, the assembler directive section with bss okay uh, define um, storage uh, not define allocate storage um, when the program loads so yeah he just goes in quite detail about that. Uh, I'm just going to the, the next paragraph is a nightmare. It's one of those long paragraphs. I don't like long paragraphs personally, um, but he used, he wrote a long paragraph. So I'm going to say what he wrote there. And then I start covering things. We can use the system fonts to display text on the screen. Yeah. But we do not want this. Um, we want um, the our own fonts, um, not the system fonts. So let's imagine that we have a font which is eight by eight pixels. Okay, and for now let's stick to this type of font. For those that know the Amiga, you know that. There are fonts which are 16 by 16, 32 by 32. In this case, we're going to use 8 by 8. And I know why he used 8 by 8. Um, it's a good idea also why he, why he used 8 by 8. Um, but yeah. So yeah, like the 64, we have, we're going to use an, an image which has a font of 8 by 8. So there are various ways of how we can define, you know, a font. We have discussed this in the past. So basically, um, imagine a bit plain and or a piece of sheet of paper squares, and you start saying zeros and ones to form your your font. Okay, he's saying it somewhere there in the text. Um, However, um, while we are at it, further down in the same paragraph, 
I do not know why he didn't use a different paragraph. He jumps into um, uh, explaining uh, the BSS section in an assembler, what it does. So first of all, I'm going to bring the um, ASIM man man manual and look for What's that? How did that come happen? Control F. Um, BSS. Okay, it's found it from the beginning. And let's make it large. So, you know the section when you create a section in assembler you know the code and you know the data and after code and data we normally add underscore p underscore c or underscore f p is for public mem which means if you have fast mem use the fast mem as go into chip mem c means go into chip mem and f means always use fast mem Or now we have another one which is called BSS. Create a section containing uninitialized data, as the manual says there. What it means is instead of using storage on uh, um, on the floppy, we can save it. Okay, because this is something. Imagine we want a blank piece of paper of a certain size. We do not need to define it and have that storage taking space on the floppy. Remember, it's not, this is 1980s, so it is in the 80s, okay? Floppies were not so big, 88 okay. If you define, if you had lots of images, if you, um, you would fill the floppy very quickly. So there is this instruction of not, instru assembler directive um, of not, of how to save space. So basically, what you do is um, what you do is um, define um, an uninitialized block of data, which, when the, your program loads, it allocates memory depending on how. Def um, how you have defined it, depending how you have defined that. So, this is how you do that. And it is here. So, basically, here we defined our section, okay, with when we're saying that we want this section to be in, uh, in chip mem, okay. And after the section, we said, okay, we want a bit plane of size. 40 by 256 so 320 by 256 which is 10k okay uh, of of storage but that will be created once we load the program in memory okay so that's what and how the uh, bss directive help us in uh, not waste compute um, storage space on our floppy or on our, our hard disk uh, basically let's see what else he says in relation to that he just continue explaining that the same thing you are you can add underscore p underscore f or underscore c which i already explained then he's explaining what happens so when you define define storage okay of byte 40 by 256 uh, what's happening we are locating that amount of memory so that i already covered um then what else he's saying um, so if we had to not define the um use the section directive BSS, okay, and we had to define, uh, use, um, define constant block, as in this case, we would actually be creating that size on the floppy, 
okay so that's why um we are avoiding that now so now let's imagine we have a, a sheet okay a piece of paper with our font and our font will be something like this okay a b c d e whatever till z and then the numbers and they will be next to each other so imagine our font eight by eight like this okay this will be an image containing okay our font okay it will be a uh, one uh, bit plane okay so only two colors so either foreground color which is black or whatever we have and our text okay and that's basically it so we have a bit plane with uh, our font we also need to understand we we also need some text let's say we have the, fa the phrase phase 101 of course no and there is the letter p so we need a way of knowing where the letter p is on this image okay so what fabio does is that he takes the ascii table okay drops the first um, 20 hex so 32 okay so we start from from uh, from uh, from the space okay until uh, uh, 1 to 7 okay we have our font we have our our letters of the alphabet whether it's large whether they are capitals or not and all our symbols and then the end so here is how much the 1f is how much we need to skip okay and this the 7f is where we end okay now he is giving this as an example in reality he does something else it's just to make us aware now i need to bring hopefully this will work because i haven't tested this this thing uh yesterday i did it but i didn't have this setup um, let me show you what i mean if it's going to work yeah you should be able to see um, my ASCII table yeah so you can see that from 0 to uh, 31 okay it's the usual garbage what I call it garbage we don't use them let's put it this way uh, as symbols as text okay uh, to be honest it's not garbage but you can you can ignore the first part and we start from 32 which is 20 hex which is our space so we have till 7f okay so 7f is a delete but actually we are telling it that it's our end of um of our of our table let's of our text that we can use so we have sentences that we can write uh, using all these symbols from ascii 32 to ascii um, 1 to 6 okay all these symbols we can use them so our font will have all these that is what he is explaining there in in the book okay um that we are going to use um those symbols as you can see this is the not the commodore 64 um, table but it's a pc ascii table that is why we have that table let's switch back to my book okay so this is what this um table or definition says that we have all these fonts in our sheet where um, uh, where we are doing the um, where we are having our um, font stored 
okay um can you see the the mouse pointer can you see it yeah so here we have i need to click on it i think when i switch from one window to another so that you can see the mouse pointer so here we have the all the symbols that we can use okay and our font our sheet or piece of paper has got the alphabet this alphabet okay this not alpha these letters or, or characters all on it okay so we need a way of when we read a character so somewhere else we need to have a sentence okay like here we have kane he made a mistake by the way these are capital letters but then what he says here are for the small letters these are the hex in small letters okay but it doesn't matter <clears throat> so when we have our sentence, we know that we need to get uh, kane, okay? So the letter C. So the letter C is lowercase is 63, okay? According to the chart that I just showed you. So then 63, somehow we need to get the letter C from here. What we do is first we, from 63, we remove 20 hex. Okay, that leaves us with 43 hex, right? Then what we do, we, ha we know the offset of this sheet where it is loaded in memory. And we add 43 times 8 because each font is, is 8 bytes high. But the, imagine the sheet, instead of being like this, imagine the sheet having the font on top of each other. Okay, like this. So the sheet is with the width of the sheet is eight pixels okay and then all the symbols and all the font uh, is on top of each other so basically we know the start of it okay and we add 63 times 8 and that gives us somewhere down here uh, the lower letter for the letter c okay now yesterday Let's see if I'm able to get what I designed yesterday. This is the first drawing that I made yesterday. So basically we have a sheet, okay? And this, ignore this part in the middle for now, okay? So this is our sheet with our font, okay? And we have the letter A, B, C next to each other. Each point here represents the memory location where the font starts, okay? And we need to take eight pixels so one byte and then we need to read eight bytes and that is transferred to our screen so this is what the one in green okay is our screen now okay i i drew it small intentionally okay to show that the screen normally is smaller but the font can be a lot bigger can be in a, on a sheet that is a lot bigger than the whole screen because it depends what type of font, what is your size of font, of the font. So, um, what happens is we take, if it's a letter A, then we know it is um, 41, I believe, no? Um, so if it's 41 hex, okay, we add, uh, we minus 20 for it. So, um, uh, minus 20 is, uh, what remains is, 21 so 21 plus the offset of of here we will arrive to the letter a okay and we put the letter a okay that's basically it in terms of this diagram so here okay now we have what he's talking about for some reason it became smaller but we'll make it bigger. So now we have the font. This is the start of our image of our sheet where we have the font. We have it eight pixels, okay? And the height is eight pixels and the font is on top of each other, okay? So to write the letter A, okay, in phase 101, so we started re reading the, the letters, okay, of our sentence and we got to the letter A. We, we go to the... Um, top location of of our sheet and we add what the letter a is and 
we get the the eight bytes following this pointer here and we display that to the screen hopefully that makes sense okay if it doesn't i do apologize but i'm not a picasso as hound dog says let's switch back to the book as you can see here he's giving the same explanation that i just got he wrote prima scritta okay uh if we take the letter p okay we go somewhere in this in our font sheet find the letter p okay which is op it's it's the next one after the o and we take the pointer of it and then we read uh, the, the next eight um, bytes so he was wise in doing the font on top of each other so that it's easier for us to understand how we can get to the font that we want to display on the screen so all this that i explained i will explain it again next week because, because he explains this twice as i said we come um please note that after we write a sentence we need to finish it with a zero at the end and the even directive okay like what we do for the uh, graphics libraries or um, whatever library we call now this is the new routine that he introduces in this chapter there is no other routine that he introduces and we will finish at this rts okay so i'm just going to show the routine <clears throat> so what we are doing in this routine um i have my notes so line number two the lea testo uh relative to the pc in eight zero okay we are getting the address of our text okay the next um character to read from our sentence the first the first character that we're going to read from our sentence then we get our screen image where we want to write why that why is that that is the one that we defined with using with dss okay where we said okay we have one bit plane that we are going to display on the screen it's empty right now it's our blank paper but we're going to write to it so that bit plane that was allocated after the program was loaded with dss we are we have the pointer of it where it starts so the first letter goes into the top left hand corner then we uh, from uh, um, so we loaded the text uh, pointer we loaded the bit plane pointer then we take the text pointer okay that we devalue okay so let's say it's letter um a okay or p let's p for phase 101 okay um so let's say it's the letter p so what we do is we subtract 20 20 hex what remains is the 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 value that remains okay is the distance from the top of the image where our font is times eight okay so what we do the result of that we multiply it by eight so we get the distance where in the image you know the font on top of each other of eight by eight okay where it is and we we add that to the base address where the font sheet is so basically um if the memory address where it was loaded is i don't know xyz just to have a, a value okay imagine a value there of xyz i mean it doesn't make sense let's say abc Okay, so that, like that it will be hex um we add to abc the value that we multiplied in the two okay of the two and then what we do we copy eight times the bytes from as you see a two points to our uh, font no 
a two point points to the font where we are okay so we point we copy that into a3 so a3 is our bit plane okay our um uh, our sheet uh, not our sheet our our screen basically uh, so we are copying what the eight bytes because that's what it is we're copying the eight bytes that we have in uh, for the font to our screen that's basically it, the routine. It doesn't do anything else. I know right now it's imaginary. I'm going to show you example number one. Okay, it, we haven't arrived there, but I'm going to show it to you because he's going to repeat it anyway. So um, I'm going to jump back to the Amiga. Okay, I'm going to read example 6a. Okay, and all it does is display a letter, the first letter. To, a, to the top right hand corner to, of the screen so you will see the letter a on the top right hand corner of the screen that's all it does it's using that routine getting the first character from a string uh, uh, reading a string getting the first character on the string and displaying it i will explain it in the next episode um, but uh, for now that may, should have made sense of what i just explained uh, thanks, Gabriele, for joining. Um, now he will repeat. Um, he will repeat what he just said. As you can see, it's the same code, but with a, an explanation. And yeah, and as you can see, then the example starts. So once we repeat it, then it's it's the examples, and then. He does something, then basically it's just examples. So when you see this green, <clears throat> it's just examples. Then he jumps back again into a bit of theory, okay, about data fetch start and stop, and then again into examples. And I believe that's when the chapter ends. Yeah, and then we start. Uh, so actually it's chapter, it's a later chapter, maybe, maybe it's chapter 9 when it starts, TMA. I cannot remember, but seven is sprites. So the one after this one is sprites. Okay, so we have uh, we have arrived at the end of the stream. Thanks very much.